Okay, hello, welcome to my man shed. Today we're going to be trying to solder this little board I've uh, prototyped. And it is a Spectrum 4164D RAM tester. You put the chip in there. Ta da! Uh, close, close the zero insertion socket. Push the reset button on there, obviously when it's plugged into USB. It'll flash through, testing every bit of the chip. If it passes its memory test, get green light. Fails, red. So, removes any doubt about whether your chips in the Spectrum 1 to 8K are any good. I uh, find this quite handy myself. I initially built, after Googling online, this, which is my prototype which works perfectly fine, not a problem. Um, after that, I've upgraded slightly to a neater version, which I think you'll find is far nicer. Exactly the same wiring, just uh, looks neater. So just a progression of the boards. Oops. Prototype, improved prototype, new prototype. And I've also designed a PCB which I'm waiting for the boards to arrive now, but that's going to be next week or two. So whilst, whilst we're waiting, I thought we'd uh, solder this up and give it a try. Got some new wire to try as well, which is really cool. Wire wrapping, so this is a finer, finer wire than maybe what I'd normally use. Let's see? So this is the first time I've been using this type of wiring. Perfect for track repair and stuff, really. So we'll see how it goes between all these points here. Okay, I'll fast forward to the video and mute the sound. So here it goes, good luck. Okay, so we've soldered all those uh, components into place. Now it's just a matter of trying to wire them up. It worked out quite good, I think. Not bad. So we can solder all these connections together. Here we go.
going to test the uh, first connection make sure it's okay. So we've gone from the first pin there to the fourth pin up there. It's the first pin, it's the fourth pin up on the other side. One, two, three, four. There you go, so we can confirm. Oh, we're not actually touching any other pins, so we've got a good connection there, so keep going. And two mines, if you can see whether to just solder the wire straight to the connection there, which is easier, or maybe a better method is to solder it into the pin next to it and then bridge the gap. More of a secure method maybe. Mm -hmm. We'll try a bit of both and see what we settle with. First one. Connecting these sides of the pins here to whichever pins it needs to go on to on the Adreno. Still a bit more to do. We've got these sides of the pins and obviously the lights, LEDs through the resistor. 
back there. So it's not too bad. Whether or not I can get these connected to wherever it needs to go on now. It's not working out to be my best job ever. But it looks quite promising. Okay, quick continuity test and then we'll carry on just wiring the LEDs up. Okay, and here's the finished result. I know I skipped a little bit then, with the video cut out. Um, my ZIF socket, which I added for convenience, is broken. That's the only one I had. I'm not going to desolder it again now. So it's a bit of a pain getting the chips in, which ironically is really stupid because it's there to make it easier to swap the chips. As you can see, you put a Spectrum 4164 memory chip into the socket. Here's a bad one. I know this one's bad. And this should be a good one. So it takes up to three minutes testing. These are my good ones because I've tested them on my other board. So hopefully after three minutes, or up to three minutes, should have a stable green light shown for this chip is fine. And then I'll show you what happens when you put a bad memory chip in. Uh, so the only thing when my printed circuit boards come is to bear in mind that, if you have a look at my schematic here, this wire is actually a V in, not a V out. Um, so my PCB will be wrong, so I'll have to cut that track and connected to there manually that's all which might be might be easy to have a look when it comes but it should be just might have jumping across from there to there and cutting that one and then my PCB design should be fine I think basically and um, that was the schematic I did this is done in TICAD um, so as you can see this is what we've got here that's my ZIF socket, which I made myself, I think, because I don't know if I've got the right size of that when the PCB comes, but we'll see. It's just a bit of guesswork, a bit of fun. Um, and there's the finished PCB. Go 3D viewer. There we go. That's what we've just created here.
top of the board, bottom of the board. But because we're impatient and we can't bother waiting, we've knocked up this one here, which is still chunnering away. So I'll just pause it and show the results when it finishes. Although it should be finished any second now. Okay, that took a while, so I paused it. We'll look at increasing the speed of the code, maybe. Um, but as you can see, after about four minutes, I think it was, uh, we've got a stable green light showing that this particular chip is fine and happy. Let's show you the back of the board. So you can see the finished results. Massive wires. So you can see why Printed circuit boards would be nicer. But this will work fine. Unfortunately, my ZIF socket was broken. I don't have another one. No, I'm not going to change it. So I'll just put in the uh, chip. Which I... Okay, so now we've put in the chip we know is bad. Um, and I've returned the good working chip to there. We're going to push the reset button and run through the tests again. And I think you'll find this particular chip goes instantly red. It doesn't fail late on, fails pretty much straight off. So here it goes. Reset. Failed. There you go, straight away. So we know for sure this chip is no good. And it's not going to go into any of the spectrum ever again. There you go, failed straight away. On the first line. Great. So, project done. Works fine. Thanks for watching. Okay, after a bit of playing around, I've optimized the code, changed a few things, mainly did delay in the blink of the light, and I also had it set. Uh, the code was checking 256k instead of 64k. So either way, so we've knocked it down, and now it does the whole test in about one minute and five seconds, give or take, instead of four minutes. You can probably see from that the Blink rate to the LED is way faster. Done. There you go. Well, I think it might have been 1 minute 20. Either or. Green light. That chip is good. It can go back in my supply. Thanks for watching. See you next time.